A couple weeks ago, I made a video about Zed, the VS Code killer that just recently open sourced. It's written in Rust and it's supposed to perform incredibly well. Sadly, when I tried it out, it wasn't performing great. On my computer, the scroll was noticeably stuttery. It didn't come across too much in the video, but I promise you, when I scrolled in VS Code, it felt smoother than when I scrolled in Zed, probably because I have the fancy 120 hertz screen, but I assumed they did too building a Mac only editor. Not only did they go out of their way to try and fix this, they actually reached out to me directly. Turned out they were hanging out in SF that week. They came to my place and they fixed this issue on my laptop in front of me in my own goddamn <laughs> kitchen. Really, really cool. And I think the things they had to do to fix this are interesting as well. So why not dive in? Here was the tweet where they showed the announcement that they had finally fixed the scroll. Believe it or not, the current preview release makes Zed even faster. On ProMotion displays, we now drive your display at 120 hertz during active editing. We now also triple buffer in our rendering pipeline. When I saw this, I immediately quote tweeted it with, fun fact, the Zed team came to my apartment to debug the scrolling issues and made these changes on the spot, which did actually happen. If you see that little monitor thing in the top right, it took me so long to get that to turn off because even when I ran the command I was supposed to to turn it off, it still appeared in random apps, even after a reboot. After a bit of chat GPTing, I got it to go away, but small costs in order to make life easier and smoother for all the Zed users. They also mentioned that they would be doing a blog post soon, which thankfully they have just now published. And we can finally talk about the craziness they had to engage in in order to make Zed the fastest editor on Mac. Optimizing the metal pipeline to maintain 120 FPS in GPUI. GPUI is a really interesting attempt at building a UI framework in Rust for native applications. It's the system that they built and use for all of Zed and the performance and capabilities they've built into it are incredible, which is a big part of why Zed is as cool and stable as it is. Zed feels smoother than ever with today's release of 0.121, thanks to a series of optimizations that began in the kitchen table of popular streamer Theo Brown. In an excellent video following our open source launch, Theo gave a bunch of great feedback, but what really stood out was its report of janky scrolling performance. That really surprised us because that wasn't something we'd experienced in our hardware. Zed's three founders happened to be in SF, so we asked Theo if we could come visit and observe Zed running on his machine. Sure enough, on Theo's M2 MacBook, we indeed observed Zed dropping frames that wasn't visible on our M1s. So we enabled the metal HUD on his copy of Zed to investigate. You enabled the metal HUD on my computer and it made everything slightly worse for a bit, but I'll forgive you guys for it, we figured it out. Yeah, here's the command. Oh, this is how you run Zed with that command before I had to enable it for my system. Anyways. What stood out immediately was that Zed was running in direct mode on his M2, whereas our M1s, it was running in composited mode. In composited mode, rather than writing directly to the display's primary frame buffer, applications write in intermediate surfaces that the Quartz compositor combines together into the final scene. We recently learned that to enable direct mode on M1s, you have to run the app full screen. We rarely enable that mode, but as soon as we did, we immediately reproduced Theo's issues. The compositor introduced latency, so you would think bypassing it would make Zed perform better, yet we observed the opposite. This is also really interesting because we couldn't figure out why mine was running it in direct mode and theirs were running it in composited. I went out of my own personal way to go do a bunch of research trying to figure out why that happened, and I couldn't. If y'all think that web stuff is documented poorly, you have no idea because holy hell, the lack of documentation of any of these weird niche metal behaviors, it just, it doesn't exist. You can't find these things. It's insane. I asked ChatGPT and they were like, oh, um, have you looked at the docs? It's like, yeah, I did. They're like, oh, um, here are what these modes mean. Cool, thanks. How do I enable them? I was just curious and quickly learned how difficult this stuff can be. We began to suspect that there was logic in the metal renderer and GPUI that we were using for AppKit redraws that were causing the synchronization issues. By default, presenting to a CA metal layer does not block drawing of the window by the OS, forcing the system to interpolate the window contents of the previous frame by stretching them until the contents arrive on the next frame. So it might be good enough for a video game, but wasn't a good fit for a desktop app. What they're describing here is when you resize the window, making sure content reflows properly as you do that. They had some hacks to make sure that happened, and those hacks cause as much problems as they solved, it seems. To avoid this, we enabled presents with transition on the CA metal layer that backs the root view of every GPUI window, which coordinates the presentation of the layer's contents with the current core animation transaction. Seems like the big trick here is blocking the main thread on the wait until complete for the command buffer. So you're guaranteed to see that frame before other things can run in the background which ensures the main thread couldn't finish drawing the window until they finished presenting its contents. They have some example code here. This is the important piece. They block the thread to avoid jitter, which sounds unintuitive. You'd think that blocking the render thread would cause problems, but actually in this case solves them because we don't draw until we've finished everything that we're supposed to for the current frame. 
Oh, this code actually contains a bug. Works well enough in composited mode when completed means the pixels were written into the intermediate buffer. However, in direct mode, completed means pixels actually being written to the frame buffer on the graphics card. And we observe this call blocking significantly longer in that state. Interesting. So this wait until completed worked in composite mode, but not in direct mode because it means something different in direct mode. This is hilarious. Like, None of this is documented. Like having read deep into both the direct and composited mode when I was helping them debug this, figuring these behaviors out is not fun. Yeah, in direct mode, this took much longer, which meant that frames could be drawn way less often. The solution was to retrain our synchronization, but relax it somewhat by calling wait until scheduled instead of wait until completed. This ensures the window contents are scheduled to be delivered in sync with the window itself, while avoiding an unnecessarily long blocking period. Antonio built a binary on Theo's dining room table and airdropped it to him to confirm it solved the janky scrolling. Problem solved. Doesn't detail the four other binaries he sent me that either couldn't be run or just didn't work at all. <laughs> but we figured it out. There was a good bit of work here and huge shout out to Antonio for being on that grind in my dining room while I was talking with the rest of the team, but he pulled it off. Massive credit. Now to talk about the triple buffering. If you're not already familiar with buffering, it's the idea of having the next frame ready. So instead of displaying a frame as soon as it's ready, you queue it to be displayed after the other ones have been displayed. It means that when you hit a stutter, it's less likely to affect you because you have buffers of frames ready to go. This is interesting. Trail buffering. Well, not quite. In our haste to catch an Uber to make our flight to Boulder, we neglected to fully consider the implications of our change. Shortly after merging, Thorsten and Kirill started noticing corruption in our rasterized output. Oof. Did not realize that that build had issues like that. Memory corruption. Oh boy. One look at the screenshot gave us a pretty clear clue. By switching from wait until completed to wait until scheduled, we introduced a race condition. In some cases, as the GPU was reading memory from frame N, Zed was writing to that same memory to prepare to draw the next frame. That is scary. This is like vertical tearing, but for your memory. That, ugh. I'm happy you could deduce that from this because I would never have figured that out. Or that's why they're the ones building the editor, not me. To solve it, we replaced a single instance buffer with a pool of multiple instance buffers. We acquired an instance buffer from the pool at the start of the frame and released it asynchronously once the command buffer had been completed. Here we see the example. So we have a new instance buffer, it's locked. They create a new buffer. They populate it with the primitives to draw the frame, associate the command buffer with a completed handler, which returns the instance buffer to the pool asynchronously once the frame is done rendering. This buffer pool clone, interesting. They're waiting on the buffer now instead, and they're able to commit things to it and then present when a given buffered command is done. This seems significantly easier to render and having a buffer to pull the frames from just as an intermediary step to prevent the memory stuff makes a ton of sense. After correcting the oversight around instance buffers, we felt like we had a solid solution. Oh boy, as soon as display link of any form comes up, I get scared. ProMotion and CA display link. But then we noticed something. Scrolling was smooth, but cursor movement really wasn't. We both had our cursor repeat rates boosted to 10 milliseconds, and we noticed intermittent drop frames when moving in direct mode. We can see them with our eyes, even though they were consistently measuring frame times under four milliseconds. Why were we dropping frames? This is another one of those examples of just really tough to debug scenarios. And it seems like they have so many of these where in their metrics, in the numbers that Apple gives them, every frame time is perfect, but they're noticing the cursor feels laggy. That's a really, really hard thing to work around and to debug. The metal HUD just did not give them the info they needed, which, ugh, yeah, I that would stress me out. <laughs> Only after staring at a timeline in instruments did a question occur to us. What if we were rendering in under four milliseconds, but the frames weren't actually being delivered at that frame rate? That's when we thought about ProMotion, a feature which modulates the display's refresh rate to save battery. Antonio disabled ProMotion on his laptop and the hitches disappeared. This is really interesting. You didn't already know this about ProMotion and about modern like pro Apple devices. They have really high refresh rates. Like all the iPad Pros now have 120 Hertz. The interesting piece here is that it's not just 120 Hertz. It's variable 120 Hertz, where it goes up and down depending on what the application needs or is doing. So if you're watching a 24 PS video, your monitor theoretically can drop down to 24 Hertz to give you an exact frame rate for that and save battery when it does that. That said, if it's doing this erroneously and it's dropping your frame rate when it shouldn't be, that's gonna look like jank. Once you're used to 120 Hertz scrolling, going back to 30 Hertz hurts. 
Our next question, how can we prevent the display from downclocking? We did some research and learned more about the CA Display Link API, which synchronizes with the display's refresh rate and evokes a callback each time the display presents a frame. Through experimentation, we discovered that if we consistently present a drawable on every frame, the display will continue to run at a constant frame rate. As soon as we neglect to draw a frame, its refresh rate drops. So we now render repeated frames for one second after the last input event to ensure maximum responsiveness. This allows the display to downclock after a period of inactivity to save power, but ensures it doesn't do so while we're interacting with Zed. Now, when you're actively editing, we ensure the display is ready to respond to your input with minimal latency. Remember in the last video, where everybody was mad that they were only supporting Mac and not Linux and Windows? They figured it would be trivial to just add these other OSs. Does this give you an idea of why that's not the case? Getting this right to the level they're trying to, nearly impossible. Now imagine doing this for every different way you can render applications in Linux, because you know if they only support Wayland, people are gonna be mad. You know if they only support X server, they're gonna be madder. They're picking the audience that makes the most sense for the tool they're building, and they're making the best possible tool for them. Someday this will be on Windows and Linux too, and they'll have to put similar effort in there, if not even more, but hopefully the level of depth they're going into here shows just how hard it is to make good software, period, much less generic for every operating system. So here's the full code for that. Interesting. Timestamp here's the key, where they're checking to see if an input has happened within the last second. If so, then they measure the frame duration. And here's the edge case, where if the time is less than one second since the last input, they keep presenting the current scene for one extra second. Okay, if anybody ever makes fun of TypeScript syntax again, and then defends Rust, I'm going to make fun of them. What do any of those symbols fucking mean? This is just as bad as anything I've written in TypeScript, and I've written some cursed shit in TypeScript. I'm sure this makes sense to you Rust brain people, but never bully me for symbols again. With a bit more refinement to pause the display link on an active Windows, we now have a much better performing solution. We also understand much more about graphics programming than we did the week before. Pretty cool that I inadvertently caused the Z team to get even better at graphics programming, especially graphics programming on Mac. We tweeted the same video the other day, but here's the cursor movement at a 10 millisecond repeat rate on an M1 MacBook with ProMotion. We're now hitting a smooth 120. Yeah. Significantly better. Conclusion. Thanks again to Theo for taking the time to help us discover the issue. A big shout out to the community for helping us test it across a variety of displays. We ship to learn here at Zed. I think we have to try this, right? Yep. Yeah. That's hilariously better. That's... Night and day. Cursor moves immediately. Page up, page down, do what they're supposed to. They did it. This is a question I got, which is Zed kind of built the same way as Flutter and would have access to the native accessibility features. The first part is kind of, where it's built a little closer to the metal and they're the ones building that engine. Where with Flutter, the engine has been built, you have to hook into it, which is a very different behavior. I would have to ask them and look more into it, but my understanding would be that if they're using like metal primitives for things, that would help them quite a bit. But I wouldn't be surprised if like a screen reader didn't work in Zed. So yeah, that's, this is actually a very, very good question. And I would default to the team and their thoughts. Congrats to the Zed team. Y'all worked your butts off for this. Thank you for rushing this blog post out for me, both Nathan and Antonio, as well as all the other engineers involved in this. Know this work isn't easy and writing things like this certainly isn't either. And God, I, I know way more about metal than I'd ever want to know. If you're gonna bet on an editor, I think the right one to bet on is the one that's gonna support you in this strong of a way. I was already pretty hyped on Zed, but after talking with the team and seeing how hard they work to make the best possible app for editing your code, I think I have to give it an honest shot. Have you tried Zed yet? Let me know in the comments. And more importantly, is it time for me to make the move? See you guys in the next one. Appreciate y'all as always. Peace nerds.